Uh, how does this go now? I better quit while I'm ahead. This is a 1973 Fender Stratocaster, but not just any 73 Stratocaster. I'm playing or attempting to play the iconic lick from Sweet Home Alabama because this is the guitar that Ed King wrote the lick on and recorded the song on with Leonard Skinner. And it's one of a number of Ed's guitars that we're really proud to have here at Carter Vintage. Um, and he had a pretty wide, wide range of interests when it came to guitars. Uh, not just Strats, but uh, Les Pauls, even PRSs, even a, uh, a, a modelly owned mandolin, uh, keyboards, uh, synthesizer gear. Uh, he was a, had a pretty wide and eclectic interest in, in music that uh, went far beyond just the, the, the great lick that he wrote for Leonard Skinner. Um, so let's move on. One of his more interesting guitars is this 58 Les Paul. And it's interesting not only just because it is a, one of the bursts and it has a, what we call a dark burst finish, but this guitar was owned by a jazz player named Ray Gomez. And it was used on a groundbreaking jazz fusion album with, uh, with Stanley Clark called School Days uh, back in 1976. And Gomez just played screaming rock and roll Hendrix inspired solos uh, over a groove beat. And it was, it was revolutionary for jazz. And so with this guitar, um, a lot of um, traditional and hardcore jazz listeners were introduced to to a new influence, a rock and roll influence. Ironically, uh, Gomez was known and, and played strats most of his career. So uh, this was a is a interesting piece of jazz history. Uh, Ed liked it just because of the neck. He, you know, the provenance was cool. But he was uh, when it came to guitars, Ed King was a neck man and liked this guitar just for that reason. And it's one of three Sunburst Les Pauls in his collection. This is one that, again, he liked just for the neck, but it, it has this interesting spot here. Uh, it came from a hang tag uh, when this guitar was sitting in a window of a guitar shop uh, back in uh, 1960. Uh, the sunlight on it caused everything to fade, all the red to fade, except where the tag was, so it left this spot. Ed nicknamed it Red Eye. It was one of his favorite guitars until it got stolen. And it was stolen for a few years, and it, there was enough publicity about it that a later owner uh, realized that it was Ed's guitar and was able to get it back to him. So uh, this is just uh, a great example of a, of a Sunburst Les Paul, and it's one that Gibson copied and replicated for their Collector's Choice series. Uh, they got the neck probably a micron off, and Ed uh, wasn't happy with it. So to show them that he wasn't happy, he refused to take the number one off the line uh, of this model, and it happened to come to Carter Vintage Guitars, and he bought it from us rather than taking it free from Gibson. So um, this is one of the more famous guitars in his collection called Red Eye. Ed played a lot of different guitars. On the, on the Skinner uh, reunion tour in 87, uh, he started playing uh, Sewers, and, uh, and after that, um, PRS guitars without pickups in them. They were weird looking things, but they had a little rolling synth controller under the bridge, and this is the, uh, the controller itself. It says Edward King right there. So this went with his, his rolling units that he used during that period. This is another interesting instrument. It's not a guitar at all in this case. It's a Yamaha DX7 keyboard that Ed took on the, uh, on the tribute tour in 87. When they played Japan, they didn't take extra musicians with them. And so Ed played the horn parts to What's Your Name, Little Girl, 
um, on this, on this uh, DX7 and also played string parts on it. So we have a, this is just the tip of the iceberg for Ed's collection. It's a wide variety of stuff. Uh, uh, really, really interesting to, to go through it as well as to, to bask in the glory that um, being surrounded by, by stuff from the great Ed King. <laughs>